Morning folks. It's a nice spring day here. I thought the sun's are shining. Birds are singing as I'm sure you can hear. And we've got a fucking big night of boxing here in the UK. So life couldn't get much better in my opinion. Obviously the main one I'm looking forward to is the uh, uh, the rematch between Mauricio Lara and Lee Wood. Now, there's a little bit of a cloud hanging over this one, purely because, as I'm sure some, a lot, most of you have seen, uh, Lara came in 3.8 pounds over, over the featherweight limit. So he's officially been stripped of the WBA featherweight title, which means, and as far as I know, the fight was, as, as, I, as I looked about an hour ago, the fight was still on, because uh, Wood's team were threatening to pull him at one point. Uh, the fight's still going ahead, which means Wood is the only one who will be eligible to win the uh, WBA featherweight title. Uh, I personally think um, Lara's going to win, which means the belt will be vacant. Uh, with this added weight advantage he's now got, I think he'll probably stop Wood maybe a bit earlier than he did last time. I hope not. I hope Wood can get his shit together, avoid that left hook, <clears throat> avoid those uppercuts, and just box. Box on the outside. I know some people would say, oh, he's just going to run. He very well, weighed, very well may do, excuse me. Um, but I think um, sooner or later he's going to walk into something like he did last time. Because I had him ahead at the time of the stoppage in the first fight back in February but um, he was still getting caught a lot on the inside body, body punches uppercuts the left hook yeah he was still getting caught and he was gradually you know sooner or later in hindsight he was going to get taken out so I, I personally think that's going to happen again I'd like to see Wood regain the title um, that would possibly set up a rematch but I don't th but that's just my prediction I, you know, I don't get it right all the time as we know I just think, with the weight advantage as well, I think Lara's going to go in there. He's going to look for the knockout. He knows he can hurt Wood, because obviously he hurt him last time. He stopped him. Controversially, in some people's eyes, not in my eyes, I think he was gone. I think his trainer made the right decision. So, we'll see about that one. And Jack Catterall's making his long-weighted return um, on the undercard. It'd be quite interesting to see because I mean he's not fought since that controversial fight with Josh Taylor last February, so it's been well over a year since he was last in the ring, and I'd be quite intrigued to see how he is not only physically but psychologically because obviously a loss like that could devastate a fighter, you know. And I'm shocked that it's taken this long to get him back out. To be honest, uh, I know they were chasing the rematch with Taylor. Obviously, Taylor's now fighting uh, Lopez. Uh, next month, I believe, on the tenth. So uh, I was, I was, uh, yeah, I kind of, I, I get it, I understand why, because he was chasing uh, the the rematch with Taylor, but that, that ain't going to happen. I doubt it very much. I think Taylor will have this fight against Lopez, and I think he'll just move up. He'll move up to welterweight. But it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Also, we've got Luis Alberto Lopez defending his IBF featherweight title, the title he took from Josh Warrington last year against Michael Conlon. And that'll be quite interesting because obviously Conlon was famously knocked out last year by Lee Wood, challenging for the WBA title. So he's obviously going for Lopez. If he beats Lopez, I think obviously down the line, as soon, we'll just just for argument's sake, we'll say that Wood wins against uh, Lara. Then that would be a big unification fight somewhere down the line. Obviously, they had that, that fight of the year, in my opinion, last year. And, you know, Conlon was kind of dominating portions of that fight. Um, it looked it looked early on like he was going to win. But then Wood, because he's a tough motherfucker, is Wood. He really is. Um, and, you know, he, he pulled it out of the bag in the last round, that knockout. That knockout punch knocked him out of the ring. <laughs> Highlight real stuff. And it's very memorable. And like I say, it was fight of the year last year for me. And a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, that would be down line. But obviously he's got to get past Lopez first. Now, Lopez is a slippery, slippery character. He's very slick. 
it's very tough. I mean, a lot of Mexicans are tough. So it's not going to be an easy night for Conlon at all. And again, it'll be. I know Conlon's had a few fights since the. Uh, he has fought since the uh, the loss to Wood last year, so I'd be quite intrigued. As he's going to be in there with a live opponent. Nothing against anybody he's fought since, but you know he's going to be in there with a live opponent who is confident. Yeah, he's been over to the UK before. He's beaten. Um, he's won. He won the title from Warrington in a dirty old fucking fight but he, I'm glad he, the right man got the decision so yeah it'll be intriguing to see what happens with him and lastly in the evening uh, I will be because I'll probably watch them in different orders I'm going to save the Acoli Lawrence Acoli Chris Billum Smith for the WBO Cruiserweight title I'll probably save that one till last I'll watch that one last purely because it's going to bore me shitless I hope Billum Smith does it purely because I want that belt off Akoli. Nothing against the guy. He's a, he's a talented young man, Olympic bronze medal medalist, uh, tough guy. You know, you don't win a world title if you're, you're a fucking bum most of the time. But he's just so fucking boring to watch. He is a bore. I've, I, I struggle to watch any of his fights. And that last one against David Light, Jesus Christ. It was only 12 rounds, but it felt like it went on for 50 rounds. It was just non-stop, same old shit, hugging all the fucking time, wrestling all the fucking time. And then you might be treated to a spectacular straight right. You say, oh, right, he's going to he's gonna push it, he's going to go for the knockout. And then it's back to holding and... Uh, I, I just find him boring as shit to watch. And I'm not the only one. You're talking wrong. You know, if you flip the coin, look at it from another side, well, yeah, it's effective for him. It's when yeah, Vladimir Klitschko was the same, especially later in his career. He wasn't exactly the most exciting person to watch. So I'll be intrigued to see what happens with that one, uh, it, it, in a way, you know. Um, but I am actually rooting for Billum Smith. Just purely, just get that belt off of Coley and then we can move on, move on with the Cruiserweight division. Because no, nothing at Cruiserweight with, with, involving a Coley uh, really intrigues me that much, to be honest. We've got Opatia down there, the IBF champion. I, I believe he's still the Ring Magazine champion. Now there's talks of him fighting Tyson Fury at heavyweight. I don't really want to see that. I think Fury should stick to guys his own size. You hear that fucking dog barking? Jesus, he fucking drives me out of the wall, that dog. Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, yeah, that dog barks all fucking day. It's unusual for it to go quiet for a few minutes. That's why I took the opportunity to come out, because I thought, I thought he was out for a walk, but obviously not. So, yeah, there's talk of uh, Opatia potentially fighting... Um, uh, Fury at heavyweight, I don't really want to see that. Like I said, I think I think Fury, we're talk, talking about fighting guys like Opatia, nothing against Opatia, I like him. He fought his heart, he fought the fight of his life beating Bradis last year to win the title, but I think it, it, looking at Fury's body, because I am a fan of Fury, I like Fury, I just get pissed off of all the bullshit and the double talk and the, the promises that he never fucking keeps um, all the fucking time. It's constant and it drives me fucking insane. And a lot of people are getting turned off by it because you get pissed off with it because it's the same old shit. It releases a, a big stream of social media uh, media videos screaming and crying and shouting and threatening and swearing and name calling. And then nothing happens. And then he announces he's fighting, I think it was a guy's name, Dempsey McKean. And then that was all went hush hush. And then all of a sudden, oh, but he's going to fight. J. Opatia. It's like, well, why aren't you? Why aren't you pursuing Wild? I'd even take Wilder for a fourth time over a lot of this shit. Yeah, the fight with Andy Ruiz fell through because he said that uh, Ruiz priced himself out of the fight, which I think is laughable. And obviously, the Usyk fight fell through because he kept changing the goalposts, and Usyk and his team said, "Oh, fuck this." Well, yeah, we, we everybody knows all about this. Then he went quiet for a while. Now he's come back out calling everybody a bitch and a bald-headed this and that the other. There was talk about him fighting the UFC guys. Is it John Jones? You'll have to excuse me, I'm not a huge... I follow certain UFC people. I'm sure it was John Jones. I, I don't know. He was having a go at Joe, Joe Rogan at one point. Now, I do listen to Joe Rogan's podcast. I don't necessarily agree with everything Joe Rogan says. I think he's a bit full of shit sometimes. But then again... Isn't everybody at some st in some ways? You, some of you people listening to this may think I'm full of shit. You know, and I don't really care. It's my opinion. I'm just just speaking my opinion. You're all entitled to yours, as I always say. We're all entitled to our opinions. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. 
There's no need to be a dick about it. No need to personally attack someone. Um, just because they... Yeah, you can disagree with people all you want. That's what life's all about. Everybody's got different viewpoints. Everybody's got different opinions. So, anyway. I'll leave it there. I hope you people enjoy the fights this weekend. I hope you're doing all well. And um, I'll probably do a video tomorrow morning. Depending on what happens, it may be Monday morning, but I will try and get it out tomorrow. Uh, talking about this weekend's fight action. So take care, folks. I'll speak to you soon.